Hi, I'm Mike Schunk and I'm here to explain the analogy that I make in my uh, paper with the working title of Rotor Dynamics of Phase Lag, an Analogy to Child's Play. So uh, in that uh, paper I describe a child's toy, a weight and spring mass, uh, described by this model here on my whiteboard. So I've got a mass and a spring with a constant k displacing a distance x. So I attempted to, to construct such a child's toy and started out with the slinky and this tiny little can and what I found was that well the sprinky's kind of torsional and gives me effects I don't want. I, I just want to look up and down. This thing's spinning on me. Okay so then I uh, tried a stiffer spring and a heavier mass and as you can see this uh, it's not a dynamic system. It has no dy dynamic effects that it is because the string never stretches unless I pull on it. This mass isn't heavy enough. So what I found that I was doing it was I was working this equation here. The natural frequency of the system is uh, directly proportional to K, the spring mass, or excuse me, the spring stiffness, and the mass of the weight on the end of the spring. So through much trial and error, I finally came up with the model that I'm going to demonstrate. That is a gallon paint bucket filled with cement attached to a door spring, which is attached to a bolt, which I use as a handle. So what I'm going to do now is demonstrate the five cases that I demonstrate in my paper. So first, first case is where there are no dyma dynamic effects of the system, so our frequency here on this axis is very slow. So there will be zero phase shift, meaning that the mass is going to move in sync with my hand and not much displacement, only the displacement I give it with my hand. So I'm going to slowly pick this up and slowly move it up, slow, well, it move, but you get the picture, slowly bring it down, slowly bring it up, slowly bring it down so that there's no phase lag between my hand and the mass. And now we're going to give some dynamic effect to the system. So we're going to work along and give it some phase lag, maybe about 45 degrees or so. And per the Bode plot, the amplitude will also increase. So now I'm going to move my hand a little bit faster and you'll see that the weight can't keep up, quite keep up with my hand. So there's a phase lag between the input and the output. And the next case, case three, is when the system is right at the natural frequency. And because this, the system will have a 90 degree phase shift, what you'll notice is that when my hand is at its maximum velocity, the weight will be still. And conversely, when my hand is still, the weight will be at its maximum velocity. That's what we mean by 90 degree phase shift in the system. And also, the amplitude of movement will be at its highest. So I'm going to attempt to excite the system at its natural frequency, which I admit isn't an easy thing to do, but we should uh, be able to catch some glimpses of it here at, at its natural frequency. So I think that it somewhat demonstrates the natural frequency. Now, above its natural frequency, this is when the phase shift is greater than 90 degrees. So at case four, let's say at 135 degrees, the, the weight will start moving counter to my hand and also the 
the amplitude of the oscillations will die down as well as uh, the next case ca case of uh, 1 in 180 degrees phase lag and I'm not going to attempt to demonstrate these uh, separate from each other because that'd be very hard to do my hands not that well calibrated but what you'll see is that uh, as I go faster and faster the amplitude of the oscillations will die down so almost as if the input from my hand can't really translate into the output of the weight so it'll stay you know, with relatively uh, less movement than before and also the 180 degrees phase lag will be demonstrated as I expect the weight to move in opposite motion from my hand so I'm going to go ahead and excite the system as fast as I can. Here we go. As you can see I'm moving my hand a lot but that weight's not moving much and also you can notice that you know, what it does move it's moving the opposite direction of my hand. So that wraps up this video. Hopefully this gives you a visual demonstration of the analogy that I make in my paper. Thank you.